Hi, everybody. Welcome to Mark's Backyard Birds. Uh, today's program was inspired from our bird hike this morning. Uh, we were out at a local lake uh, and walking trails around the edges of that and uh, saw uh, several birds that were in transition, as we say, because it is the time of year where molt uh, is happening for a lot of bird. Now, we'll, I, I've done whole videos on molt, and molt uh, is, it, it may not know, is where, how birds change their feathers. They replace worn feathers. They uh, get new feathers. The old feathers fall out and they're pushed out, and uh, the new feathers grow in, and it takes time, and it's a gradual process. But uh, this time of year, it's very prevalent because a lot of birds are molting from their winter, more drab plumage to their breeding plumage, which, believe it or not, is, is better camouflage for a lot of them. But for the most part, it's for mate attraction. Um, the, you know, the females, uh, it, uh, for the most part, sit on the nest and they can't be very colorful. They need to blend in so they can uh, safeguard the eggs, whereas the males are showy. They have to uh, protect their territory and they want to attract a mate and they want to define their territories by being showy to the, and, and the other males saying, stay away, stay away. Uh, and no better example of that that we get to see uh, this time of year is at our bird feeders is with the American goldfinch. Now, all winter, uh, we have been seeing uh, American goldfinches that look like this. Now, this is a winter-plumaged uh, goldfinch, very olive, very drab. This one's getting some nice bright uh, yellow in the, in the throat. But for the most part, when you say the American goldfinch, and a lot of people are confused by this because they see these birds and don't know what they are at their feeders, because they're expecting them to all look like this, the wild canary yellow, um, which is the breeding plumage of the American goldfinch. American goldfinches are very rare in that they can change their feathers completely twice a year. In the fall, we don't usually get to see that transition because they're out in the weedy fields eating, and they're not as heavy at our bird feeders. But this time of year, we get to see a lot of this. We get to see a lot of the transition. This is a you know a male who's getting in a lot of those yellow breeding uh, uh, plumage feathers. As you can see, he's starting to get the black in the head, uh, the wing, even the black, uh, the wings will uh, mold as well, and so the the black will be a lot richer there. So they're famous for this, but only half famous because we don't get to usually see the fall. Uh, molting process, but we do get to see the spring molting process. So um, one of the things that confuses a lot of people, and we're going to talk about some of the other groups here, some of the other birds, they go, but if you have a real simple field guide, a basic guide, or maybe just one of those fold out sheets or something, it doesn't show you a lot of the variations in plumages. That's why a good field guide much thicker, lots of birds in it, but more importantly, it's got lots of variances in the plumages of birds. It, a, a, a more involved field guide like National Geographic or Sibley's or Peterson, they will show you multiple plumages of the same species. So if you look in a real simple guide and all you get is that uh, canary yellow uh, uh, picture of a goldfinch, and you don't get the the olive drab winter one, then you it, it will confuse you. So that's why a little more involved field guides is usually where people will uh, you know migrate to or will evolve to, so they can learn more about birds and about these plumages and things like that. And there are a lot of birds. Now this isn't the bird. You know, we saw some goldfinches this morning, but the bird that inspired this this morning uh, was this guy. This is the yellow rumped warbler or myrtle warbler here in the eastern part of the country. And this is a breeding male, beautiful, absolutely stunning bird. Um, and, but just uh, can be mixed in with them right now, but especially just a month or so ago, this bird pretty much looked like that. Uh, and there's a, a huge variation between the winter plumage uh, and the breeding plumage, uh, and warblers are famous for that. Several of them are, and it, it is a confusing thing. And that's what we kind of got us on this topic this morning, talking about it. And there are other groups of birds that do it well. One of the reasons that um, people uh, are afraid to, uh, when they see a shorebird, uh, like uh, it's because this is a black-bellied plover, and this picture was taken in the fall, uh, in, in the winter plumage. But we'll see him here in the next couple of weeks. They'll look like this. This is a breeding plumage uh, black belly plover. Gorgeous bird, but 
that's a far cry from that bird right there when you see it, the, the drastic change in the plumage. But you can see why the this would be much more camouflage for them than the, this plumage whenever they're on their breeding grounds trying to attract a, a mate. And another, you know, another group that people shy away from are the, the uh, gulls. And uh, we've been seeing uh, these guys, these are Bonaparte's gulls in winter flying around our lakes uh, here and, and, and it's the white slash in the wing and the little black spot behind the ear as what we get to see in, in, in especially uh, in spring and, and late uh, fall and early winter. But if we see them during the, uh, closer to the breeding season, we see them look like this, the total black head and the whites are whiter and the grays and uh, the mantle is, is darker. It's, they're just beautiful little birds. But when you see them like that, it, it's confusing. That's why you have to use that white slash in the wing to identify them. And then sometimes in molts, they'll drive you crazy because uh, nature will call, throw a curve at you. And this is a, a, a northern cardinal who uh, has a throw molt or a head molt, and they, uh, they, they call it bald looking. Or I, I read an article a year ago called Cardinals from Mars uh, because people uh, get confused by seeing it. Some blue jays, this happens with blue jays as well. So sometimes you'll see these unusual molts. And some in some cases it can be featherized, but for the most part, it's just a throw molt where they uh, he'll be perfectly fine. He'll regrow his feathers and and uh, things will keep going. So moles a fan that fascinating topic, but right now the reason for it, it you see a lot of transition right now is it's the, the nesting season. You know some birds don't, but a lot of birds do, and that's why when you see some of these confusing plumages, uh, it, it pays to have a really good field guide where you can look up multiple plumages of each bird. So. It molts a fascinating subject, and like I said, I'll put a link into the description below. Uh, it's a great idea for a topic because it, it helps you understand the birds a lot more. And, and, and you shouldn't be so scared to take on trying to learn all like birds of like shorebirds and gulls. Uh, they're a little more challenging, but that's what makes it fun in my world. So it's a great idea for a program. Give us a like, give us a share. Don't forget to check out the, the information below in the description. Give us a like, give us a share. Until then, come on, let's talk birds.